Good afternoon and welcome to this meeting of Pitt Lockery Common Good Fund. The first item on the agenda today is appointment of convener. Do I have any nominations, please? We have a nomination from Bailey Williamson for Councillor Duff. Do I have a seconder? I will second. Thank you. Councillor Duff, would you like to resume the role of convener, please? Uh, thank you. I'm happy to skip. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much uh, for appointing me as convener and welcome to this meet afternoon uh, meeting of the Lockery Common Good Fund. Um, do we have any apologies? Thank you, convener. We have apologies from Councillor Lang and I'm aware Provost McDade is running late. He may or may not join us. Thank you. Uh, and respect of the items of business before us this afternoon, are there any declarations of interest? None, thank you. OK, um, item four is the minutes of the previous meeting, which are of the Polochry Common Good Fund Committee of the 18th of December 2019, sometimes Mac, but can we agree the minute? Agreed, thank you. OK, item five matters arising from that minute. I think there is one, not for discussion today, but it does talk about um, the Common Good Asset Review report, which I think has been circulated to members in the intervening period. And but wonder if perhaps we should ask for it to be formally brought to the committee at a future meeting, just for the record. Okay, agreed. If we could mark that, I think it's uh, item six three five one in the in the minute. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, item six on the agenda is discussion on common good policy. Uh, it is a while since we last held uh, a common good uh, for Pitlochry meeting. And in the interim and coming up in the next couple of items, you will see uh, the information around about the financial position of the uh, common good fund. It is low in terms of capital, but uh, we have started to get some uh, regular income which will boost the funds uh, estimated um, this year to be a surplus of £2,800. Uh, and I was proposing that we use some of that to start to build up our capital uh, and um, part of it also for financial assistance. And I would be interested in members' views on that kind of general policy about trying to use some of that fund to, to build up the capital for future. Councillor Williams, Bill Williams, sorry. Uh, thank you, Kavina. My, my understanding is, is we've, we've always just um, handed out the interest on our, our payment on, on, our, uh, on the previous year. And I'd be inclined to just adopt that policy of we only hand out the interest on, on our uh, on the money in any applications. So just in, in relation to um, our current position then, as I understand it, we would have donations totaling £2,400 in interest of roughly £400 for the um, for the, the year coming. So your preference would just be to use the £400 and use the rest to build up the the capital. That's correct, yes. Okay. Councillor Donaldson, I don't know if you have any comments to make on relation to it. No, not really. Uh, I think this should be up to local members representing Pitt Lockley. My only observation in terms of the total size of the fund, I know for Creef, which is slightly larger, but not much, mm. um, we restrict applications there to effectively two per annum at £500 each. You know, so, uh, you know, because you're more conscious, you're trying to maintain the capital and slightly improve on it. But, you know, that it, it has to be for yourselves uh, to to decide upon. OK, sure. Um, 
Okay, uh, obviously we're a smaller number here today and it's, it's uh, I'm not proposing we take uh, motions and counter motions in relation to this. Um, in in the past, we have, um, as you say, stuck to to the interest. So I think in in the basis of the, the today, I would be happy that we keep it at that at the moment, and perhaps uh, we could have a further discussion on this at the next meeting once uh, Provost McDade is present. I take it it's not online at the moment. OK, oh, here we go. He's just actually arriving just now. Provost McDade, can you hear us now? Are you online? Oh. OK. But I mean, because right. we I think because we are late, I think, you know, well, I, I would suggest we retain the status quo and, we and then once well. we've got a full complement and everybody yeah. can be here, yeah. then we can make a further decision on that. But my, my view is we just hand out the interest and, and okay. preserve the capital as much as possible. OK, well, we'll maintain the status quo just now and we can we can review this at the, the next uh, um, meeting of the um, Pogokri Common Good. OK, uh, thank you for that. We will move on to item seven, which is application for financial assistance. Uh, Sarah, you're going to take this. Thank you, Sarah. Good afternoon, councillors. Today, the committee is being asked to consider one application seeking £2,000 in funding. The application is from the Serenity Garden Volunteers at the Holy Trinity Episcopal Church, who are seeking £2,000 funding in order to make the garden more accessible. The works will include replacing and extending the existing pathway, as well as widening of the entry gate. This project will mean that more people, including wheelchair users and children in prams, will be able to enjoy the garden and the activities that take place there. The committee is asked to consider this application and determine the level of any funding to be awarded. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> um, hopefully members have had a chance to review the details in the application. Um, I, I wonder if anyone has a view on... Yeah, could I propose we gave them £400? That would be the the full amount of the interest for this correct period at the moment. Um, I, I'm happy to go with that. Uh, I, I had the four hundred pound in my head in relation to whether we would increase the the the, the amount available uh, for for financial assistance. So I'm happy to accept four hundred pound. Is anybody otherwise minded? Okay. Provost McDade, can you hear us? Yes, yeah, I can, thanks. OK, thank you. Um, we've on to the item regarding um, financial assistance to the Holy Trinity Church uh, Serenity Gardens. And there's a, a motion, uh, a proposal from Bailey Williamson of £400 uh, towards that uh, grant application, which I'm happy to second. Are you otherwise minded? No, I'm happy to support that. Thank you. That's grant. Thank you. In that case, uh, thank you for that, uh, which takes us on to item eight, which is the financial statements, which cover a, a period of time, certainly, and uh, yourself will lead on that one, is it? Or is it? Oh, Alison, sorry. Beg your yeah, pardon. I'm going to lead today. Thank you. Thank Alison. You <laughs> Thank you, convener. Um, and I do apologise. I have the wrong heading on Appendix 2 when I've inadvertently called you uh, Kin Ross. So we will get that tidied up to Pit Lockery. Um, this report is for noting and provides the income and expenditure for the fund for the financial years 1920 to 23 24 since the committee last met. And in Appendix 2 provides the income and expenditure for the fund to 30th of June and the projected outturn for the current financial year. The projected surplus for 4-5 is £800 and the estimated balance at 31st 25 is 10457 if the commitments under consideration are approved today. Obviously, you've just made some decisions that will amend that, but happy to take any questions. 
Thank you. Are there any questions? Bill Williamson. Yeah, I understood that uh, the Pit Lockery Common Good Fund was due to receiving some funding from the Pit Lockery Tartan account. And I'm just wondering, it doesn't seem to have appeared in the accounts anywhere. I'm just wondering if we've actually received that funding yet or not. Alison, are you aware of that? I'm not aware of it, but I think maybe Xander ah. will be aware of it. <laughs> Provost me, did. Uh, thanks, convener. Um, yes, I can confirm that uh, the Pitlochry and Moulin County Council, uh, as part of the winding up process, did produce final accounts uh, for both their administrative account and for the uh, coat of arms tartan account. However, unfortunately, um, due to uh, an error uh, with the cheque, um, the coat of arms tartan account uh, needs a new cheque. Uh, to be written uh, so that the council can cash that and can uh, then account for it with the uh, common good fund um, as a uh, as an item. So um, it hasn't yet been received by the council, but is due to be received. And the strategic lead for finance and business administration is aware um, and has uh, agreed that um, it will be um, processed as fast as possible once the council has a new uh, check written. Thank you, Provost. That answer you, Bill Williamson. Thank you. OK, are there any other questions in relation to the financial statements? No. Nope. OK, thank you. Alison, do you have anything further? Sorry, uh, no. beg your pardon. Provost. Sorry, uh, yes, um, since I missed item six, I'm going to be um, cheeky, if that's OK, convener, and ask a question relating to financial income for the common good in the financial statement, if that's OK. Um, I just want to ask uh, Alison as the um, senior accountant here uh, in terms of the income that the common good uh, receives in terms of the policy around um, the common good fund isn't currently receiving any income from the part of uh, the uh, Riakin Road car park that it owns. I understand it's obviously not all of the car park and um, it is only part of it, but um, I know that this has been brought up within the community. I'm just wondering if Alison can outline um, the uh, current um, income around some of that and whether there is, uh, whether it's been in surplus deficit and whether there is opportunities for some of that income to be received by the Common Good Fund in the future. So from my understanding, um, the car park, because it is um, being used for council um, service, then they benefit from the receipts and also um, incur the expenditure. So. For all there is um, income received for the car park, there's also um, costs which um, are entailed in terms of just operating the car park, but also there's been significant investment in terms of um, electrical vehicles, points um, and areas like that. So um, it doesn't generate um, a surplus, um, which would be um, I think what, what you would be saying is you would be looking for a contribution to the common good. There is actually significant costs incurred. So at the moment, the contribution um, that was just that is received by um, the Pitlochry Common Good Fund is from uh, the organisation which um, operates the restaurant on the grounds. Not sure if that Thank answered you. totally your question, yeah. Councillor McDade. Provost McDade. Uh, thank you. Yes, yeah. um, I'm aware that the current contribution we're receiving is a is obviously a voluntary contribution because um, they're uh, actually on council land, not common good land. But they, as part of the arrangement with the council, agreed that they would make a contribution to the common good fund. But um, it's my my question was around the <coughs> the way the car the electric car charging is which is mostly what the common good owns and also obviously there's the coach parking which I don't think we charge for um, so that's obviously where the small coaches park is the other part where 
Um, but at the moment, you're saying that the um, where the electric car charging is because of upgrades and um, the cost of maintaining that that's currently not generating a surplus. So there wouldn't be a surplus to provide to the common good. Is that correct? Yes, is that that's I'm getting my understanding. Uh, OK, thank you. Uh, Bill U. Williamson. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Kavita. Alison, I would accept what you say there about the, the, the income and the, the expenditure the council uh, takes on board. But then when you look at uh, Perth Harbour, for example, which is where Perth uh, Common Good gets most of its funds funding from and the amount of investment the council has made there, I, I, I wonder if the same arguments being used to the Perth, Perth Common Good Fund has been, as is being used to the Pitt Lockery Common Good Fund, i.e. We are spending a lot of money there and we're taking the income. But that argument doesn't seem to be uh, the same for, uh, let me see, Perth Harbour, for example, which is where Perth, Perth uh, Common Good gets its funding. OK, um, I am by no means an expert on um, the Harbour and Perth Common Good Fund. I would need to look into that. Um, unfortunately, um, normally Donald uh, comes to these committees and has you know, been entrenched in the common good um, looking at that for a number of years so um, I could definitely have a look at um, what's been happening in the Perth common good versus the Pitt Lockery um, common good fund. But I, I know I we are applying the same account you know we do apply the same accounting rules um, again it can depend on what's been classed as common good what areas have been classed as common good um, and the, just the operation of it as well. Uh, OK, sorry, Fiona. Sorry, I just wanted to comment uh, from what I know of the the harbour situation is that um, that is common good land and there's rent is actually charged to businesses for the use of um, of the common good land. So that's slightly different is my understanding from Pitlochry where what we get is a, a contribution um and and, and so it, there's it, it's 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 slightly different um scenario there as far as the harbour is concerned and that rent is charged for particular uh pieces of land on the harbour but uh, certainly we can look into it thank thank you bill williamson yeah, Fiona, I, I, I recognise what you're saying, that, that we're charging rental, but basically we're still charging rental on parking spaces. So there's, in my mind, and I suppose the layman's side, there's not much difference between what we charge rent on, we're still charging rent on space. And therefore, the, the same rules in my mind should be should be applied. So it was just to try and get some clarity around that. I think if, if I could come in at this point, certainly uh, from my recollection, my last conversation with uh, Mr Coyne around about that situation was that the electricity up until a point last year was being provided free of charge. So there was very little income from the electric vehicle chargers, um, but he wanted to wait until we had a year's worth of income to um, see what the situation was before we had a discussion about um, a contribution from the reacting car park towards the Common Good Fund. I think we're past that position now that we've got a year's worth of figures in relation to um, chargeable electricity at that site. So it might be helpful that we, we have an offline meeting to discuss uh, what the situation is with regards to um, charging and the reacting car park and that we bring this back um, at the next meeting in terms of the um, policy in relation to this. That would be helpful. We agree with that, uh, Fiona, Alison? Yeah, I think that would give us a bit of time to just go and do um, a bit more <coughs> looking into it as well. OK, would members be happy with that? OK, thank you. Yeah. Are there any other points in relation to the financial assistance papers? Sorry, nope. can be just, on, sorry yep. just on that last point. Um, 
I think a, a discussion offline is helpful, but I, I think um, if we can uh, agree, because obviously it's unfair on Alison to put her on the spot at the moment, but um, mm -hmm. if we could agree that a paper, you know, a short paper, don't have to go long, but a short paper will come back detailing that position that you've just explained around what the mm -hmm. income and outgoings have been over the last couple of years um, to the next meeting of the Common Good Fund so that it's in the public domain as well. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Thanks. OK, are we all doing that? That's fine. Uh, can we agree the financial statements under item 8? Agreed. Great. Thank you. Uh, I think that concludes the business of Plotlochy Common Good Fund for today. Thank you and goodbye.